Hello friends, so welcome to this lecture in which we will discuss about how to implement the concept of principal component analysis in python. Whatever hardware you are having, you can find some data set in which you will face problem in terms of implementation. This may happen due to the redundant number of features or large number of features. Okay. So, there you uh, will find curse of dimension and uh, dimension also. Dimension means the number of features in your data set. So, the solution is in terms of dimension reduction techniques and we have learned theory of PCA in past couple of lectures uh, that is one of the dimension reduction technique. Now, we will implement it in python. So, let me come to the implementation of PCA in python. So, in my first example, I will take a two dimensional array means two dimensional synthetic data, where I am having two features x 1 and x 2 let us say. So, creating data so I will be having a np array. So, before. So, first I will import numpy as np and now I will be having an array np array which will be having let me take first row as 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 13, 20, 20, let me take 18, 24 and 26. So, instead of this 18, I can take some entry in the increasing order. So, let me take 21. So, how many in, uh, elements I am having in this first row 1, 2, 3, 4, Okay. So, this is my first row and the total number of elements in this row are uh, total number of elements uh, is 11. Okay. Similarly, I will create one more array. So, let me take 5, 7, 11, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19 and then let me take 26. So, I am having this two dimensional array which is of size 2 rows and 11 columns. So, to make it data, let me take the transpose of it and let me print x. Yeah, so, you can see. So, now you can see this data set or G, uh, this array h, the first column is representing the feature value x 1 whereas, the second column is representing the feature value x 2 for all these 11 samples. Now, our objective is to apply principal component analysis on this two dimensional data set and to reduce it into one dimensional representation. So, first let us plot this data and see what kind of data it is. So, for that I will import matplotlib dot pi plot let me write as plt and then 
I will plot this data plot scatter. This is a function for scatter plotting and then I will be having first column of the x. So, all rows and first column on the x axis and the second column on the y axis. So, you can see this data. Okay. So, here the horizontal axis is represented by first column of the data means the this particular array whereas, second one is the second column means vertical axis is by second column. Okay. Now, what I will do first normalize my data by shifting the mean of the data to 0. So, for shifting the mean to 0 what I need to do I will subtract the mean of each column from the entries of respective column. So, that I can do like this x and here x is equals to 0. So, that I will take the mean of first column I will subtract that mean from each entry of first column and then I will take the mean of second column. I will subtract that mean from each entry of the second column. So, you can print your data after this and you can see the change in the data sorry data name is now x mean. So, you can see now this data. So, first column is having mean 0, second column is having mean 0. You can plot this data to have a better visualization using the again scatter plot command. So, I am using the same which I have done for x. So, let me define a new figure here and then I will plot original data also. So, that you can have a comparison. So, you can see the blue one is just shifting of the orange data. The mean of the blue one is at 0 0 whereas, the mean of orange one is not at 0 0. Okay. So, this is shifting the data or I will say uh, normalizing the data with 0 mean. We are not doing anything related to standard deviation here. Now, I will calculate the covariance matrix. So, I am following the same steps which we have learned in previous lecture. Okay. So, n p dot covariance is the command for finding the covariance matrix and I will calculate it on the shifted data the data having 0 mean. You can see this covariance matrix here. So, it is a two dimensional data. So, the covariance matrix must, must be a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix and this you can see from here. So, it is a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix. So, now what is our next step? We have calculated the covariance matrix. Now, we will calculate the 
eigen values and eigen vectors of this covariance matrix. So, let me write eigen values as E well and eigen vector as E vec. And for calculating eigen value and eigen vector, you know the command we have learned in one of the previous lecture dot eig and here you can pass your matrix which is a matrix C. You can print eigen value, you can print eigen vector. So, you can see this first row is a one dimensional array and these are the eigen value of this matrix. First eigen value is 119.29 and the second eigen value is 2.269 like that. This is the eigen vector corresponding to first eigen value that is the bigger one and this is the eigen vector corresponding to second eigen value. So, in PCA I have told you that what we will do we will find out the eigen values and eigen vectors of the covariance matrix. Then we will sort those eigen vectors based on the eigen values. So, the biggest eigen value will give you the principal eigen vector having the means in the direction of that principal eigen vector your data will be having the maximum variation. Okay. And then as we will go away from larger to smaller singular values that variation will become less and less. So, in that way what we will do now uh, we will sort eigen values and eigen vector. So, first I will sort the eigen values in descending order. So, sorted index and p dot arg sort is the command and I am applying on the eigen value. Okay. Now, sorted eigen value I will write sort sorted E well equals to you calculate this E well on sorted index means you can arrange it in terms of sorted index. Although in this example they are already sorted, but I am telling this particular cell for a general problem. And then similarly you can sort your eigen vectors. So, I will write sorted E vec equals to um, E i g and then I will be uh, means E vec because you need to sort E vec and then you will be having based on the sorted index. So, it will sort you the uh, eigen vectors in order of descending eigen values. Okay, so, we have sorted the eigen vector here. Now, how many component you want to take that you need to define after the sorting. So, it is a two dimensional data I want to have one dimensional representation of this data. So, I will be having n equals to 1 and then I will be having uh, evac subset equals to sorted evac. So, I am taking a subset of that and so I will take only first eigen vector which is my principal eigen vector. So, 0 to n. And then what I will do? I will run it. So, I will be having only first eigen vector, this you can see from here print evac subset. 
So, you can see from here this is your first Eigen vector means Eigen vector corresponding to biggest Eigen value. Now, I will transform my data. So, for transforming I will use the projection of all data points onto uh, a line given by this Eigen vector means a line in the direction of this Eigen vector. So, for doing that I will be having x radius and p dot and here I will need to have a very simple thing that I will use only a subset one dimensional subset and once I will run it this is the one dimensional representation of the original data. Okay. So, this is one of the way applying this singular value uh, uh, applying this principal component analysis using all the steps which we have learned in theory lecture. We can use a very direct method also for this one and uh, that is quite easy. So, for that we will import a PCA function from sklearn dot decomposition and import PCA and then I will be having I will be having PCA equals to this PCA function and here I need to define number of component. And this I want to take one because my data is two dimensional I want to reduce dimension one. If you are having 100 dimensional data you want to make it 20 here you will give 20. So, whatever dimension you want to retain that you need to give here. Then you have to use this command PCA dot fit. So, I am having a PCA tool and I will fit all data using this estimator PCA and here you have to give your data. So, my shifted data is x mean which is a two dimensional data and now my projected data will be given by PCA dot transform because from this data it will learn the principal Eigen vectors and other Eigen vectors and the transform will project that Eigen uh, the original data onto the reduced dimensional space. So, I will be having x mean and then I will be having print x r. Okay. So, this is another way of doing it. So, what we have done? We have learned a method from the basics and another method the direct implementation. So, you can see how uh, good is this direct implementation. You have to imp uh, import your PCA from SKLN dot decomposition. SKLN is a uh, library in Python which is having lot of machine learning algorithm. And then in the second line you create your object of PCA. So, I am creating this object, I am giving the number of component here which I want to retain. I am fitting this PCA object onto my data and then I am transforming my data based on the fit, fitted PCA and finally, I am printing my data. So, just 5 lines you can apply PCA. So, this is first implementation of principal component analysis. I will take one more example of principal component analysis on a real data set. So, my next example will be on a famous benchmark data set which is called Irish data set. So, this Irish data set is having 3 classes. Okay. The classes are Setosha, Versicolor and Virginica. So, I am having images 
of the iris of flowers from three different category. Now, what I am doing? For each and total I am having 150 such samples in my data set, 50 from each class means 50 samples from Setosa, 50 from Versicolor and 50 from Virginica. Now, I am defining the feature and these features are nothing just petal length, petal width, sepal length and sepal width of each iris. So, this data is having 4 features. So, it is a 4 dimensional data set. especially these feature vectors 150 feature vectors belonging to each sample are vectors of R 4 because these are having numeric value means real numbers. Okay. So, I hope the idea is clear I am having a data set where I am having first column is petal length, second column is petal width, then I am having sepal length and width. So, these are my four features data is four dimensional and then I am having 150 samples of this data. So, here my data matrix is 150 by 4. Let us say this data matrix is D. Okay. So, 4 columns and 150 row. Each row is a feature vector or pattern belonging to a sample of flower. Also, these samples are coming from 3 different classes and so on. Now, the covariance matrix of this data set will be of size 4 by 4 because okay. So, 4 by 4 because it is a 4 dimensional data set. So, I will be having 4 eigen values of the covariance matrix lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and lambda 4 corresponding eigen vectors let us say x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 respectively. Let us say lem these eigen values are in this order means lambda 1 is the biggest eigen value then lambda 2 and then lambda 3 and lambda 4. So, this x 1 will be the principal eigen vector, x 2 will be the second principal eigen vector and so on. Now, what is my objective? My objective is to reduce the dimension Two. Okay, so I need to find out two new features y1 and y2, which will be the linear combinations of or weighted sum of original features, original four features. So, what kind of linear combinations uh, they will be? So, let me write in a more clear way. So, let me say this is x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4. So, y 1 will be alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 plus alpha 3 x 3 plus alpha 4 x 4 and y 2 will, uh, will be beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus beta 4 x 4. So, in that way I will get a 150 a dimension vector y 1, y 2 having 150 components. So, I, my data set which is of size 150 by 4 will reduce into 150 by 2, where x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 will be replaced by only 2 columns y 1 and y 2. Now, what are these alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and alpha 4? These uh, this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and alpha 4 is nothing 
it is your principal eigen vector ok the eigen vector corresponding to biggest eigen value of the covariance matrix and similarly beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 4 will be the eigen vector corresponding to second largest eigen value ok so now let us try to implement this in python how we can reduce the dimension from 4 to 2 ok so first i need to import this original data set which is a 150 by 4 matrix so for first i will import this data sets all the data sets from sklearn so in this sklearn utility of python we are having many data sets okay so from there i will import this data set uh, sub package and from that this data sets i will load iris so by doing this this iris will be a 150 by 4 array so let me run the first cell yeah now if you want to see that uh, features so you can see sepal length sepal width and petal length petal width and all are in centimeters if you want to see this data you can see first column which is the sepal length of 150 pattern second column is giving sepal width petal length and petal width ok so this is 150 by 4 array you can see if you want to see the targets you can see from here so you can see first 50 patterns are from setosa class which is represented by 0 that is the target class next 50 patterns are from uh, versicolor which is represented by 1 and the last 50 are from uh, virginica which is represented by 2. Now, like the earlier example uh, when we have done uh, we did the direct implementation I will import PCA from sklearn dot decomposition ok and the same time I will imp import matplotlib dot pi plot hplt. So, now I am having my data which is in iris and I am having my tool which is PCA. So, now implementation is very easy. First I will create an object of this PCA, Why, uh, when I will create the object I will define how many dimension, how many feature I want to retain by using n underscore components equals to you want to retain 1, 2 or 3 like that. So, here we will see with a n number of components equals to 2 means we are coming from 4 to 2 dimension. So, I have created this object then the process is same for any example PCA dot fit here you need to give the data and then you can transform it on the learn object and the new data you can save in x. So, again you can see these are nothing just first line, second line, third line and fourth line. So, only like 4 5 lines the above lines are just to read the data and see the data what kind of data we are having. I have I can plot also after because now my two dimensional data is x. So, on the horizontal axis I will be having first principal component on the vertical axis I will be having the second principal component and then I will plot it and you can see. So, here I am having first principal component that is my capital Y 1 and on the vertical axis I am having capital Y 2 and you can see the data 150 points each one is given by this colorful dot where color are representing the different class whether the patterns are coming from setosa, virginica or versicolor 
and you can see the original data is four dimensional. So, you cannot plot four dimensional data to visualize, but we have applied PCA on this data and we have reduced the dimension into means we have make it, we have made it two dimensional. So, two dimensional data you can always plot using PLT dot scatter and we have plotted it and here you can see these glass are almost easily separable. Easily separable means you can uh, separate this uh, purple class from rest of two other classes just by putting a hyperplane or what I want to say a line in 2D. Similarly, here you can find out a line where you will be having very uh, one or two misclassification only means very less number of misclassification. So, even two dimension this data is not having very complex classification problem means you can easily use linear classifier to separate this data with some error obviously here because there is mixing in this area of the green and yellow patterns ok. So, this is a and uh, this is an implementation of PCA on Irish data set. Similarly, you can download other data sets like let me take name you wine and many other data sets are there at UCI repository and from there you can download data you can apply the PCA using the same algorithm only thing you have to import your data and give the name of data here. Okay, so, this is my second implementation of this class of this lecture. So, let me summarize this lecture. So, we have learned the implementation of PCA in Python. Uh, we have taken couple of examples. In first example, we have taken two dimensional data and we have projected to one dimensional space generated by the principal eigenvector. We have seen how to do it from the basic PCA algorithm uh, like computing covariance matrix and then computing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the, that covariance matrix and so on. We have also seen a direct implementation by using the escalon dot decomposition dot PCA function which is which used to take only 4 to 5 lines only to implement principal component analysis. We have also applied it on a benchmark data set which is called iris data ok and we have seen means how we can reduce the dimension from 4 to 2 and we can easily plot our 4 dimensional data by applying the PCA in reduced dimension ok. So, with this let me close this lecture. Thank you very much.